Hello, hello, friends. Thank you so much for tuning into this case study today. Um, we're going to be going through Abby's journey through round two of the brand plan. Um, and I'm going to start off by having Abby introduce herself to y'all. So Abby, tell us a little bit more about who you are, what you do, what does business look like for you? Take it away. Awesome. Well, I'm Abby Hockulay. I live in Kansas City, Kansas, used to be Missouri. Um, and I'm a senior photographer, so I specialize in high school seniors, college grads, and I also do some family photography. Um, right now, I'm focused more on the senior side of my business, um, but I pivoted from the wedding industry. So yeah, now I'm doing high school seniors primarily. So yeah, another thing we have in common, yeah. pivoting from weddings to doing something different, but still in the photography world. Okay, I love it. It's all good. You can do it. <laughs> yeah very doable not everybody has to I mean some of us get our start in weddings and then it's just our launching pad for other things but um okay so we're going to jump right into brand plan conversation because that's kind of the meat and potatoes why we're here um and I would love for you to just kind of take us on a bit of a journey back to the beginning of the fall when you were considering hopping into the brand plan how were you feeling about your brand before going through the program so I probably have a more unique story entering into the brand plan than some because I had just redone my website. I'd spent most of the late summer, early fall redoing it. I think I launched it in November and I don't know when the brand plan exactly mm -hmm. started in October. Um, so October, I, was yeah. like, I was like launching a new brand, which is kind of funny, but at the same time, I needed the confidence to talk about my services and to also like launch the website well. Um, cause I'd put all this effort into the website and effort into like really doing some soul searching into figuring out, okay, why am I jumping into seniors and pivoting out of the wedding industry? Um, so yeah, my story is a little bit different. I was feeling good about the direction I was headed in, but I wasn't feeling confident in how to present it. And that was the, that was the tricky part. And that's why I needed the brand plan. So. Okay. And when you say how to present it, would you feel like that was specifically marketing related or do you feel like you weren't confident in the way that you were saying things? Um, kind of tell me a little bit more about like how you were hoping for it to come across that you just feel like you couldn't do. Yeah. So I would say it was a hundred percent marketing because I think like I used to kind of deem marketing as basically just all social media. And I used those okay. two, things. even though I know those two things, like marketing is this more overarching thing. I think we've gotten really used to just treating them like they're the same thing in today's society. So for me, it was primarily, how do I show up on social media how do I, what are some other ways of marketing that I really need to be investing my time in? And I guess it, as a third option, it was a little bit like, okay, now that I know this is what I want to do, how do I talk to other people about it, whether that's online or in person? Um, and we've talked about, and I'm sure we're going to get to this at some point about how the brand plan did help me, even as someone who's very outgoing and very talkative in person, like really helped me tell people why I do and what I do. So why I do what I do and what I do, excuse me. So, okay. So when it comes to marketing, feeling like the roadblock that was standing in your way, was it the knowledge of what to do that was the roadblock? Like, tell me a little bit about why that specifically felt like a roadblock, like why marketing did in general. I just don't think that I had ever been through, and this isn't me blaming like, social media or the people that I followed before, but I just don't think I'd ever been through like an in-depth workbook or just period of time where I actually thought about how to connect with my ideal audience and what that even looks like. Um, Cause I think a lot of people are focused more on and being consistent is great, but a lot of people, when they're giving you social media or marketing advice, they're like, you have to be consistent. You have to post every day, do these things. And you and I have talked about this before. It's very like, we're just going to give you these simple tips. And if it doesn't work, then the algorithm's just not for you. Bummer. Um, but I feel like what the brand plan taught me is to really focus more on like consistency in the voice, how I present myself, how I talk about my business. Um, so 
I don't know if that really answers the question, but like, I feel like my roadblocks with marketing was just paying attention to people that were going to give me like really simple tips. And if those didn't work, then Instagram's just not for you. And you know, that kind of stuff. So, um, I also had not really taken a deep dive into, okay, what pieces of marketing are working? Hadn't even really sit, sat down to like, think about that or like go through it. <laughs> so yeah, I hope that answers the question, but I just hadn't mm-hmm. really, I followed, so. I followed a lot of like quick fix things instead of consistency over the long term. So then you said you followed a lot of quick tips things. You tried a lot of different things before. Tell me a little bit about just a few, and I'm not expecting you to name drop or anything of that nature, but what were some of the things that you felt like you tried to solve that problem? Just just harp on that for like another minute for me. Yeah. I mean, I think the biggest things that I tried were downloading a bunch of apps or trying to be consistent on a bunch of apps, like, you know, Facebook, Instagram, I even like, and I love Pinterest for, for what it's you know capable of doing for your business. But like, I don't feel like I ever poured a lot into one of them. I just kept creating accounts and trying to like post as much as I could on them. Um, and I mean, doing that kind of made me a lot better at like being able to repurpose content, which is super important for your brand. But I never took a deep look at like, okay, so Instagram's not working what should I do? I'm just going to continue posting every day because that's what people are telling me to do. And I, yeah, I don't even remember what some of the, you know, people that I followed were, were saying along those lines. And I don't even really have names in my head of who that would be. Um, but you know, I was listening to a podcast recently about how, like, you know, everybody's like, oh, you got to create short form content. You got to create reels and stuff. And, um, there was a guy on the HoneyBook podcast recently that was talking about like, honestly, now reels are getting about the same amount of traction as static posts and things like that. So, you know, if you're not careful, you're still going to see a bunch of people posting about like, you still got to do reels. You still got to do short form content and you get caught in this hamster wheel of like, well, everybody else is doing it. So that's what I have to do. Um, Mm -hmm. so yeah, I'm not really sure that like I tuned into one person in particular that was telling me you know, like these specific quick fix things. I just kind of like also followed the crowd and saw what other people were doing. And, you know, I didn't, didn't even think about starting an email list. Didn't even think about like creating an easier way for people to get, um, access to knowledge from me on my website, like blogging, things like that. Like I wasn't SEO driven. I wasn't email list driven. I was just kind of like, we're just going to keep posting on Instagram and see what happens. That was me before. (laughs) But then the, with the before in mind, how do you feel like the brand plan helped you remedy all of those things? Yeah, I feel like you see people, re- well, in recent, you know, posts and podcasts and things like always talking about like focus on what's working and do more of that. And I feel like the brand plan will help you focus on what is working, but it will also open your eyes to other things that could work for you. Um, and then really help you delve into how to make those things work. So like, um, especially for me, when I was starting out, I don't know, for some reason I was able to get to a point with my brand where I really did know what I was about and what I, who I wanted to serve and how I wanted to serve those people. Um, but I couldn't put it into words. And that's what the first part of the brand plan, like that first section was able to help me understand like, okay, why do I feel this way though? Like, why am I able to feel so confident moving into this season? And why are these the people that I want to serve? And also I think like the, one of the parts that was most impactful for me in the brand plan was your ideal audience is not you. Like your ideal audience is someone else, but Mm -hmm. most likely most likely it's not like you as a person, it's somebody else with these values and how do we figure that out? And how do we figure out like where those things align? Um, Cause I think a lot of people are out there posting about posting to themselves as if they're posting to themselves. And I don't think I was paying as much attention to who my ideal audience really was and how to like solve that issue. So um, 
yeah, I would say like, even we were talking about, I have so much more confidence now just talking to people about it in person. It's easy for me to rattle off why I do what I do and who I do it for. Um, whereas before I was like, well, this is my new website. This is what I did, you know? So. Uh Do you feel like that big takeaway of your ideal audience isn't you? They don't look just like you. They're not a carbon copy of you. Was that something that was freeing for you or intimidating? Intimidating. Okay. Because I think- Were you able- Yeah, go go ahead. ahead. Well, I just think when you've gotten into the habit of posting as if you're posting towards yourself for a long time, it doesn't matter what that other ideal audience is or how much money they make or, you know, where they spend their money or like where they live or all these things. Like, it doesn't matter if it's anybody other than you, it's going to be like, Oh, I didn't know that. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So it's a little intimidating at first. Yeah. I would say. Like, how do you feel about it now versus right after that first realization? I feel a lot more confident now. Um, okay. I don't know at what point that is in the workbook, but, uh, I think when I realized, and this is just, this is just a me example, but like, I I don't know how many other people this happens for, but like, I realized that the people I was marketing to, or that I should be marketing to in my audience were, um, people that had a lot more money to spend on my services than I had previously thought. Um, and so I think like, I was justifying that in my brain as like, oh, well, they're like, these are people that are a lot wealthier than me personally. So like, I should be intimidated by that. But I think once you learn how to talk about your brand, it kind of throws all, I don't want to say it throws all that out the window, but it certainly like, it makes it more doable. You know, it makes Mm -hmm. it more, don't start looking at people's attributes anymore. You're just looking at, um, like what problem you can solve for them. And that's the only real thing Mm -hmm. on your opposed to like, yes, I'm getting paid for my services, but more so I'm helping you solve an issue. So Mm -hmm. I think it got way less intimidating as I went along for sure. Do you think that that also helped you to be able to, because I know the one thing that you all won't know as you're watching this is that Abby just launched a senior spokes model offering. Woohoo. Um, And it's a little bit of a higher tiered package than some of the other things that you were offering. So do you feel like it gave you understanding that your ideal audience isn't you, that they they op- they live in a, a higher tax bracket, they bring in more money, um, the things they spend their money on look different than what you are able to. Do you feel like that gave you the confidence to launch that offer? Um, okay. <laughs> I feel like before the brand plan, I was pushed, like I was putting out my, my packages and my pricing on my website. And I was like, I was like, I know this is what is required for the work I'm putting into these packages, because I also launched a much higher tier, um, package offering for individuals and like spokes models within my program can get access to that for a percentage off if they're a spokes model. But without that, um, you know, it's, it's a pretty high offer. Like it's a pretty big offering. Um, and so not only was I launching the spokes model program, but I was launching that as well. And I think before the brand plan, I was like, well, I know this is what I need to be charging for how much work I'm putting in, but it still feels, it still feels hard to talk about. It still feels difficult. And now I think I have the confidence that it's like, yes, not only is this what my services are worth because of how much goes on in the back on the back end of these processes, but it's also like, I know that I can charge this because I am solving this issue for people and I'm cutting out so much of the work for them, um, that I have the confidence to present that to people. And I've been able to talk to people about it in a really clear and concise way that I, I just wasn't Mm -hmm. able to do before. So. Yeah. Which I think is the beautiful thing about when an offer is specifically tailored to fit somebody's need. And it's not just one that you're like, okay, I pulled this out of my brain. I've seen a couple of other people do it. I really want to try it. Theoretically, this is going to fit my people. But you had stopped to do the work even before jumping into the brand plan to kind of figure out what that looked like for your people and how to build out that experience. And then through all of the data that you gleaned, 
and the understanding that you gleaned in the brand plan specifically, you were able to then make sure of those things. And now like launching it, it's been so fun for you to be like, wait, I thought that I was going to close the doors at this point. But then all of these people had these questions and I'm booking more people than I thought. And I think it's just, it, it's one of those things where people tell us all the time, know who your people are, create your offers for them specifically, right? Create them to, ser- to solve problems, create them to serve a specific group of people. And we know that. But then when we actually do it, we're like, oh, this is why I need to do this. It actually affects like my bottom line. And I think the beautiful thing is, is that it takes away the anxiety that you have when it comes to selling. Because you're like, no, I know that this thing is going to serve someone's life. And so because of that, I have confidence selling it, not because I feel icky, but because it's just an exchange of value. I know that the experience I've created is going to serve their lives because I've done all of my research and I know my messaging and I know all my things. Um, And that's like a continual process too. Like I was telling somebody the other day that I'm so glad this has been as successful as it's been in launching it, but I have to pay close attention this year to see what to change next year. And Mm -hmm. so I think that's also kind of what the brand plan taught me was like, and that's why I'm so glad I invested in it because now I have this evergreen process of being able to look back and go, okay, given this data, where are we at now? And next year, I know I'm going to feel even more confident in putting that out there because I've been able to look at the numbers that will happen this next year. So that was one of the biggest reasons that I joined was because I wanted a, I wanted a consistent thing that I could always come back to, to dive into and re like, I don't know how many times a business will continue to recreate themselves over time because everybody has a different lifespan of their business, but it's really comforting knowing that I can do that. So, yeah. And I think that it's the, I think that that's also the mindset shift that I had when creating the brand plan, but then also that almost everybody has taken away is that a brand is not something that you can check off a list of to-dos. It's because just like you as a human are a human who has an identity that is going to have a life in which you will look different as a person five years from now, 10 years from now, 15, 25 30 years from now, right? It would be a very sad reality if you looked like, like if, if you acted the same, believed the same things, um, responded the same at 55 as you knew now, right? And I was thinking, and so, the day, I was like, what am I, what's my business going to look like in five years? And I was like, why are we thinking about that? Live in the present. What are we doing? But yeah, yeah. But the beautiful thing is just like as humans, we're ever evolving. And we almost have little identity crises all the time because we're like, wait, I'm changing. This looks different, but it's the reality of life and it's the reality of business. Now, in some regards, a business can be a little bit more constant and calculated because it doesn't have, it's an entity and an identity of a thing that's not actually living. <laughs> and so it doesn't know, have, it feels like it becomes, in the, you, in, it becomes, okay, you. Fair enough. <laughs> But no, I I know exactly. A little bit more calculated than my personality is, so. though. Just a little, yeah, yeah. I don't know if I wake. I don't know if I go to sleep at night going, "What is my caption going to be like tomorrow?" In terms of real life, I don't know if I do that. I kind of wake up and just go with it. <laughs> yeah, but but yeah, we're pretty good at coming up with witty witty comebacks though in comments. So one might think that you didn't think about this. Well, and that's one thing I also want to mention in here is like one of the most profound things, and I don't want to give away something that was already like that was in the brand plan, but I feel like this is no, go for it. Is like one of the most profound things that I needed to hear. And there's, there's little things like this sprinkled all throughout is marketing is just sharing. Like when you Mm. said that, when you said that in one of your videos, I was like, marketing is just sharing. And like, granted, there's ways to figure out how to do that strategically to reach the right people, not necessarily the most people, but the right people. And so I'm learning that every day. But when I heard that, I was like, wow, that makes it so much less intimidating because I'm great at sharing. Like, I'm great at sharing. Mm-hmm. And and you had a front row seat this quarter and last to like, I've been growing into being able to share more and just like 
not treating Instagram like this big, bad, um, intimidating thing and just like putting it out there. Um, but when you said that, I was like, marketing is just sharing. I just have to figure out how to share the right things to the right people, you know? So, Mm -hmm. yeah. And I can't take the the full credit for that. I wish I was that profound. I'm pretty sure that one came from Seth Godin, but he's also like a wizard and a genius when it comes to the marketing realm, at least the, the part of the marketing world I love to live in. So all of his stuff is worth it, but yes. The concept of the fact that marketing and sharing is so freeing because I feel like we're like, oh, marketing strategy, marketing tactics, marketing this, marketing that. And it feels like this, just like the concept of a brand, both of them feel so large based on the amount of content that is out there. And everybody has a different opinion. And so you're like, wait a second, but I act as a mini marketer for every freaking thing in my life. Like if I like my water bottle, I'm going to share about it. If I liked the smoothie I just had, I'm also going to share about that. And if I share about that, then that person might go and buy that thing or that person might go and visit that location and also buy a smoothie from there. That's yeah. marketing. All yeah. we're doing is taking one idea and we're spreading it. And then that can bring in dollars, but it can also just bring in perspective shifts and changing people's lives, which is why like the idea of marketing has always been a part of society it's just mass produced now. And that's why there's a difference between advertising and marketing. And advertising is much more like ads, TV commercials, and arguably a lot of the modern day brand deals and influencers. And that's like our modern day take on advertising versus marketing has always been more organic. We just have a hard time separating the reality of the two. Which I would just like to say at this point in time that I majored in advertising in college, but not marketing. And that's why I needed the brand plan. (laughs) No shade to my professors. They were great. (laughs) Didn't really give me the, I feel like advertising is the showy part. And I got really good. It's it's a lot flashier. Yeah. And we were just saying the other day in a conversation that we had, I have a, I just told you the other day, On the topic of organic, I may not have a huge following, but I have a mighty following. That's what I was thinking of. You remember when I told you that? That's what it was. Yes, I wrote that down. And that feels more organic than showy. And I think a lot of people in today's day and age, they're like, I have to go viral. I have to. That's another one of like the quick things that you'll see a lot on TikTok and Instagram. They're like, here's how to go viral. And I'm like, but what if I don't even want to go viral? Like, I just want to sell my services and help people solve this issue and so I think that needs to be I need to find 30 people I don't need to go viral to find 30 people like if all of my if all of my Instagram followers right now purchased one of my services I'd be fine I'd be rolling in it dude I don't need I don't need I don't need to have a hundred thousand Instagram followers and honestly I think if I did I'd be I'd be like why do all of y'all want to see that I don't know like I'm uncomfortable with 1800 of you. So I don't know. I don't know, but it's a good thing. I learned to start talking on my Instagram stories now. Cause if I ever reach that point, I'm going to need the confidence. That's all I'm going to say. Um, all right. So I want to do a bit of a rapid fire celebration, but what are some things that you've, and you can choose, like if you launched it during your time in the brand plan, you can also talk about that. Um, but like, what are some of the things you've launched or finished? into your time in the brand plan so I've launched my new website I have launched a senior spokesmodel program and like closed the applications and I'm getting ready to welcome a whole new team um I've launched um, like I said one of my higher ticket offerings and I have applied for some things some really cool opportunities that I feel like because I knew a little bit more about who I am and who my brand is, I feel like I was able to confidently apply for those fun opportunities that I wouldn't have been able to have the same confidence in prior. So I've just, I'm, there's a lot of back end things in the works of like being able to attend some fun retreats um, and being able to start some new, some new fun passion projects because of it. So yeah. Yeah. Yay. Yeah. So then if you were to take one part of the brand plan and say that that helped you to check all those things off or to jump into all of those things, what would you say the one thing was that the brand plan gave to you that helped with launching or 
finishing those things. Would it be the confidence? I was going to say confidence. I've said a lot in here and I know that, but that's because it did give it, but I would say aside from confidence, just a clear roadmap, honestly. And that's what I needed. And that's what I told you before was, I don't feel like a lot of people have that, you know, they've got the quick fixes, but they don't have a roadmap for roadmap for your brand roadmap for your marketing. Both. I think the brand part, I needed an understanding of and the marketing I needed a roadmap for. So I think when you pair the understanding of your brand through the brand section and the roadmap for the marketing, gold. Okay. If you're, if you're, if you're still here with us, thank you so much for still watching. Um, We're going to do one more rapid fire. Like what's, what was something that you gleaned from the community, the cohort that you went through the group, like the brand plan with? What's one thing that you felt like you gleaned from that that you wouldn't have had you not had that community? I mean, I'm like, we were just talking about this the other day. I am like an engaging, interactive person. And so I think that Mm -hmm. if you're like looking at your own brand, it's great to be able to like look at something objectively, but you're we were just talking about like you are your brand in a lot of ways and seeing other people's not just opinions but their observations about your brand can help you to learn the things that you may have been overlooking because it's you looking at it and so you're biased just like you think that you're your ideal audience you're you're probably not um so having an inside look into other people's brands and being able to bring that out for them but then have them do the same for you and tell you things that you're like, oh yeah, you're right. Like strengths test, strengths finder. When I pulled those strengths from my test or whatever, I was like, wow, I don't know if I would have thought about all of these. And all of you guys were like on point. That is you. And so I'm like, that's what oh, I, yeah. need, you know? So yeah. yeah, you read them and I was like, and I think it was Dana and I going back and forth. And we were like, yep, we see this one. We see this one. We see this one. We see this one. And this is how you use this one. And this is why you're good at this. And yeah. Well, that's, that's why the always co- one of my favorite conversations. Yeah. I mean, this yeah. would be amazing even without the cohort calls, but the cohort calls like further cement those ideas into your head of like, okay, this is how I see my brand, but this is how other people see my brand too. And being able to put that all together is so valuable. Oh, love that. Okay. So then other than just do it, what would you say to someone who is on the fence about the brand plan? That's I already I'm... know that just do it would be your answer. <laughs> I'm really like the Shia LaBeouf meme of like, just do it. Um, If you're on the fence about it, like take a solid look at where you want to be a year from now and how you want to show up for your brand and like how confidently you want to show up for your brand. And if confidence and a roadmap, like we just talked about, are what you're, what you feel like you're lacking, then this is absolutely for you. Um, and the community is just the biggest bonus of it all. It was a wonderful way to tie a bow on it. Um, well, thank you so much for sticking around for tuning into our TED talk. Basically, I guess, no, we'll just call it a podcast. This was the podcast version of a case study to hear, you know, Abby, Abby is the podcast queen. So we basically just have her on right here. I'm a podcast girl. She is a podcast girly. (laughs) Um, we love it so thank you for tuning in Um, obviously if you have any other questions you can shoot me um, an email Um, and then uh, I'll tag um, Abby here in the blog post below and you should totally go and give her a follow she is a hoot and a half on Instagram stories and I love it so thanks friends bye friends